This episode of the Brilliance Plus Passion Podcast is brought to you by the Podcast Reach System. Are you ready to exponentially reach more profitable customers? Launching and hosting your own show is your proven best solution for networking, client attraction, and establishing your celebrity expert brand. Visit www.podcastreachsystem.com and claim your rightful place as the leading star of your industry so you make a difference for your community, market, and audience. Welcome to the Brilliance Plus Passion Podcast. Join us as we celebrate entrepreneurs, business creators, and brilliant minds who reveal what they are doing to make the world a better place by being part of it. Be sure to visit our website at www.brilliancepluspassion.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now sit back, lean in, tune in, get your notepad and two pens ready, and let's get started. My name is Adam Homie. I am your host, and I am honored by your wise decision to tune in and invest in yourself today. Right now, we are speaking with Ifat Cohen, who is one of the most interesting people I've had the ability to connect with recently. She is known as the creator of the Jackpot Moments system. And just to tell you a little bit about her, she's an entrepreneur who, that runs an engagement marketing business, helps entrepreneurs establish interest, instant trust with their prospects. She's been in business for over 11 years. She does Krav Maga, loves geeky things, cooks spicy food, and is a traveler and adventurer, but also one who loves her speech. <laughs> I'm really goofing this up. One who also <laughs> loves her holy, sleep holy. and strong <laughs> coffee, which I might... Mean to need a strong iced tea, and would you know it? I have a strong iced tea right here. Now, sleep and strong coffee don't really go together, do they? Let's find out. You can discover so much more about Ifad by going to the episode post at www.brilliancepluspassion.com, where you can see your extended biography, links to her various websites, and ways to engage with her. And with that, come on in. Welcome aboard. So happy to have you here. Thanks so much for having me. This is awesome. Yes. So the first question is, how does the work you do make the world a better place for your clients, customers, and the world at large? I love that question because a lot of people, when they start their business, they don't really think about impact, right? They always think about like impacting their own life and their own family. But if there's no big why behind it, right? When things mm -hmm. hit, turn really nasty, you know, a lot of people quit. Um, so what I found from my own personal experience is that social media can be a very isolating place. Everybody's putting just the best results out there, right? And a lot of people kind of feel like not up to par. And that creates a lot of loneliness, a lot of depression, a lot of, you know, suicide even, even in teens. Mm -hmm. And so what I do is I teach people to build communities that people feel like they're in their own family, like they belong. Because I truly believe that if you... Uh, if there are only five people in the world that get you, like really, really get you, where you feel understood and accepted, then your happiness level just grows up, right? And then you're happier and your kids are happier and your partners are happier and everything is better. And so I am really, really focusing on creating communities that, you know, make people feel like they're a part of it. Not like, mm -hmm. oh, it's a fan club, but it's like, no, this is my home, my family, and I care about them. That's hard. That's fantastic. So just so our listeners understand, I'll ask the question directly. What is it that you do? What do I do? I yes. show people how to connect with like-minded people in real time through communities and move from seen to sold out. So a lot of people um, online specifically are kind of like bombarded by the vanity numbers, right? Everybody's chasing yeah. the million followers, 5,000 followers, all that stuff. And you and I know these vanity numbers don't mean shit. Right. Yeah. Remember that uh, influencer on Instagram, 2.3 million followers couldn't sell 32, 36 shirts because when there's no connection and where there's no trust, then nothing happens. You just have vanity numbers. Oh, I remember that so, story. Right. And so a lot of people, when they get started, that's what they chase. Right. Like how many views do I have? How many followers do I have? How many impressions do I have? That doesn't mean anything. What it really means is that 
you're in the rat race, just chasing nothing. And so what I help you do is once you get to the point where people are seeing you, how do you move to the sold and the sold out? And that's a complete system that I, uh, I created around delivering jackpot moments. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> we discover this lot, a lot with the podcast reach system. In fact, it was designed to deal with the issue of what, why should I host a podcast anyway? How am I going to get listeners and downloads? Nobody's going to tune into this. And then it's evil first cousin once removed. Oh, I, uh, yes, I would be very interested in being on your show, but please send me your listener and download stats. I'm very busy and I need to make sure that I'm maximizing. Uh, uh, no, no. I take the opposite approach. Uh, I share with people that there is one listener who matters. So you're on the Brilliance Plus Passion podcast right now. Who do you think is the most important listener right now? Whoever listens, right? There's, one, per- there's one person who's most there's important. One that one person is the most important one. <laughs> Who is that? You? I don't know. No, it's you. Me? Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> okay. Yes. You are the only person, no matter what my metrics are, who is guaranteed to stay for the entire time. You're the only person with whom I am guaranteed some sort of connection above and beyond the interview recording itself. That's true. And that's what I coach my clients and customers to understand is it's your guest. Or if you're the guest, it's the host is the most important listener to that episode. When you treat getting listeners and downloads as a result rather than as a goal, you're actually more likely to get that. It's true. Because if, you know, if the conversation is boring... Yeah. I'll be worried. <laughs> Nothing's <laughs> gonna happen. Nobody's even gonna listen to this. Right? right. So yeah, it has to be it has to be a fantastic conversation and yeah. both of us are interested in each other. All it's right. So good. let's have yeah. a little bit of fun here. In your experience, what are three of the frequently asked questions you get from folks who are going through their process of deciding to work with you? Yeah, so you know, I'm known as I'm that geek. And I'm geeking out on everything techy. I'm like the person who like really, really gets excited from like this awesome plugin that allows you to do all these things. Um, most people don't care about that stuff. But right. when they think about like, oh, I need to build something or I need to be seen or I need to convert, the questions are kind of like, well, how do I build my website? How do I convert more in the email? How do I go live? What do I do? Like it's more technical questions, right? How do I get over my fear of camera? What's the plugin for blah, blah, blah? What's the system? Um, so I get a ton of how-to techie questions. Right. What are some questions you wish people would ask? The strategy ones, right? Like the meaningful ones. Kind of like, right. how do I move away from acquisition model to retention model? How do I accelerate trust? How do I build relationships that last, right? How do I make an impact in the world? More the strategy rather than the tactical tools because those change all the time. Right? <laughs> Getting married to a tool or a, or a method or a tactic, not going to help you grow the business. But if you're actually focusing on the strategy and the big goals, then you get there faster. Right. Let's have a little bit of fun here and help people understand a little bit more about you. You're a very unique personality, which I really enjoy. What is something that people who know you would be surprised to learn about you? Um, well, that I, when I was young, when I finished my high school in Israel, I grew up in, in Israel, yeah. went in the military, worked in security and all that stuff. And then I decided to travel the world. And I thought that the entire world spoke English everyone so i thought you know where i'm gonna go i'll be fine so imagine my surprise when i took a one-way ticket to chile and nobody on the plane spoke english and I was like what the hell <laughs> <laughs> i didn't speak any spanish uh but you know with some uh sign language and my beautiful smile i kind of like managed to get along <laughs> find a hotel and actually travel all of uh, south america for like eight months Without, you know, learning their language on the way. It was fantastic. That's fantastic. <laughs> I love that. What do you hope people say about you when you're not around to hear it? I would love people to say that I truly care about them. Um, they're not just numbers in my email or my following, but there is real relationship and I have made a difference in their life. Wow, that's great. So if you could go back in time and change one thing, you've done or one thing you've experienced what would that be and why 
So you're going to hate this answer, but I've been thinking about this a lot and there's really nothing that I'm going to, like, I want to change because even yes. the bad experiences, you know, either I learned from them or something good came out of them or I became who I am today, right? Um, but if I had to change something, then I would go back if I had it in my power and make sure that Vic Gundotra will not quit Google Plus and Google Plus will not get shut down and we will all live happily ever after over there. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? This is going to be one of the most unique episodes of Brilliance Plus Passion because you just saw Princess Alessandra performing supervisory duties, climbing up on my shoulder like, like a parrot. <laughs> She she hangs around for almost all the episodes. Uh, what famous person, alive or dead, would you like to meet? And what questions would you have for them if you had the opportunity? So I'm an Israeli. Um, and Israelis are a very, very interesting type of people. They say, yeah. like, you know, two Israelis, three opinions. Uh, so it's very, very difficult to get things done uh, with some Israelis, some. So I right. would love to meet with Netanyahu and... If I could, you know, if he was truthful, I would love yeah. to find out what is it like to really be the prime minister of Israel? Yeah. Because you have so many people, you know, against you and arguing with you and contradicting mm -hmm. you and all the good that you do doesn't matter to some people, right? And so how, like, what makes him wake up in the morning and go like, you know, despite all of that, I'm going to do my best. Instead of going like, the hell with this, I have relationships with the top people in the world, I'm just going to take care of myself. So, yeah. Yeah, that's that's an, that's an interesting approach, and uh, and you know, I've been following Benjamin Netanyahu's career since I was in college at Penn State, and I was basically a TA for a Middle East Studies class. Uh, yeah. This this actually fell during the first time he was prime minister, and there were the the Y Accords and some other things going on at the time. This is the late 1990s. Every Thursday, I led a discussion group where the students in the class were assigned to subscribe to and read. Everything in the New York Times, it was Middle East related, and it was all fair game for a quiz I would give them at the beginning of each time. So he was a frequent topic of conversation, and uh, there's, that com there's that combination of his own brilliance and passion about what he very much believes in, uh, some of the yeah. controversy around him, and also some of the achievements he's accomplished. He's what I like to think of as a very complex, multidimensional character. Um, he, there's a bit yeah. of a love-hate thing there, too. Yeah, and you know, in the last few years, the the media in Israel were so like everything they did was to you know kick him off everything, mm -hmm. and I know what it's like, you know, like you too, right? Like if someone, if one person says something bad about you, messes up your day, right? Like you can get tons of like fantastic testimonials, but right. one person comes up and says, "Oh, you suck," and you're like, "Oh, really? I need to change everything," and I'm like, yeah. "What is it like to you know?" The TV, the radio, the newspapers, everything, mm -hmm. right? Just against you, against you, against you, against you. And yet, you're like, no, you know what? I'm here to serve. So, I don't know what it feels like. Um, mm -hmm. And and I wonder, I was like, I really, really wonder, like, where does he get the, where does he get energy to be, the, yeah. or like, not just say, fuck it. <laughs> you know, the, like, I'm done. The same, now, <laughs> now to be Fair and balanced, before we move on to the next question here, the same questions could be asked about Franklin D. Roosevelt. Uh, one of my favorite books of all time, it's called FDR. It was written by Ted Morgan. It came out in 1985. That was my idea of light childhood reading. It's a 735-page biography, and it really gets into some of those same factors. Franklin D. Roosevelt, uh, contrary to the myths that some of us are taught today, was not exactly the most popular president we had during his own lifetime. When he died, there were celebrations. I yeah, I I, I know that, I know, that may, I know that may be a little hard to believe what? because he died right before, uh, right before we won World War II. But yeah, there were celebrations when he died. If you could possibly yeah. believe that, after he after he saved America from itself, so to speak, and yeah. led us through uh, one of the the greatest, most terrible wars in history, that was yeah. the thanks he got. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's fascinating. So I would love to sit down and like, you know, in closed doors, actually mm -hmm. hear the real world truth of like, you know, yeah. what's going on in his mind. And that's why I went on this little bit of a segue here too, because I think it's important for all of us as business creators, when we serve from our intersection of our brilliance and our passion, that's going to ignite other people's 
passions and it may not always be positive. So uh, I like to learn from people like that. And I found that most historical figures do within their own lifetimes find themselves in those types of situations, regardless of political ideology, where they are on some scale or whatever it is. It's a pretty universal thing. So what motivates and inspires you to keep going when you're having a tough time or facing a challenge? Uh, two things, actually. One is my mentor. I think I believe you have to be surrounded by people who are, you know, in your corner all yep. the time and a little bit above you, right? So they can always raise the bar for you just a little bit. So if you get stuck, they go like, ah, that's nothing. Here's how we solve it. Uh, so having a mentor in your life, someone that you work with is super, super important. And, uh, and the second one is like, you know, when you get those light bulbs come up in mm -hmm. like your customer's eyes and they go like, oh, jackpot right i'm like yes that fuels me because then i can see like okay now we're moving together and i'm really making an impact and someone feels like you know they have a home and they belong and they're heard and they're making progress and taking action despite the fear and despite the doubt and despite everything that everybody tells them uh that's for me is like woohoo let's get another one come on let's get another one <laughs> so being surrounded by people that you know that i can impact is um fantastic great great so uh finally i know you have a special gift for our listeners and we'll get to that in just a moment i will share that with them but in general right now what is one action that you would love our listeners to take as soon as they finish listening to us today so i would love for them to take an action <laughs> Most and people action. are like stuck in analysis. They're just consuming, 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 and never taking an action ever. Like one little action that moves you a little bit closer to your dreams, whether it's calling someone, whether it's actually messaging someone, whether it's going live, whether it's writing that email, take action. Uh, I know so many people who are just stuck in their like dream world and maybe and stuff, and they never take action. Um, so, and I found that it's not for lack of information, right? All the information is already out there. Um, YouTube University, mm -hmm. Quora, Siri, <laughs> Google, right? We got all the answers out there. Yeah. But what's really missing is taking action, uh, which is why my community is called Action Heroes, because it's not about me teaching you shit. It's about a place where you can <laughs> come in and take action together, right? And so if you're asking me for one action, I'm like, it doesn't matter what action. Just take one. Go for a run today, join the gym, eat mm -hmm. something better, drink some water. Just take action. Most of us are such creatures of habit and we just in inertia, right? We're not doing anything. We're just analyzing and maybe, yeah. and maybe this tool and maybe this thing, and maybe this website. Choose a path, dedicate yourself to it and take action. And the second one, just take a mentor. Do you yeah. decide who you want to work with and find someone to work with? As I love to say... If you have point A, you're point A, and you have to get to point B, and whether it's a straight line or it's a long squiggly line or whether you have to go over a mountain, if you want to get closer to point B, take a step toward it. it could be a small even step. It's, it's a step. step back, right? Yeah. Even if it's two steps back, one step forward. Right. Just be in action. Be in movement. Just keep moving. Because if you're not, you're going to wake up five years from now and be like, oh, man, I should have started <laughs> five years ago. So yeah. just get started. Oh, Yeah. So tell you what, tell you what, um, we are so excited to have had you here today. And before everybody goes, uh, this is what I know you wanted to share with folks. For those of you who are listening, who are out jogging, I'm going to say this slowly one time. And beyond that, I'm going to encourage you to visit our website at www.brilliancepluspassion.com. Find this episode and see the link in the show notes. It is from seen to sold out.com forward slash take the red pill where there are hyphens between each of those four words. I'll say it again from seeing to sold out.com forward slash take hyphen the hyphen red hyphen pill. And this is for you. If you feel that for some reason you can't seem to make your income goals and you will discover the truth behind high ticket sales. So with that, Ifat Cohen, thank you so much for being with us today. It's been an honor, and believe me, an education. Thank you, Adam. 
Thank you for tuning into the Brilliance Plus Passion Podcast, where we celebrate entrepreneurs, business creators, and brilliant minds who are making a difference for their community, market, and audience. Remember to visit our website at www.brilliancepluspassion.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Brilliance Plus Passion Podcast. Thank you.